this is Jerry, and we are about to start our um, presentation. This is the second firm series part two, and today we will be discussing the recruitment efforts. Uh, before we begin, I would like to mention that this video presentation does not constitute direct legal advice and is for information purposes only. The information provided should never replace information uh, informed counsel when specific um, immigration related guidance is needed. Um, just a second. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to make sure that you guys see my screen. Um, okay. All right. So we will start with uh, the basic question: What is a firm recruitment? As many of you know, uh, part of the uh, recruitment, part of the firm labor certification process, is that uh, the employer must conduct recruitment, and the idea behind it is to demonstrate that. Uh, there are no U.S. workers who are qualified, willing, and able to take on the position. Um, the recruitment, uh, the employer is expected to conduct the recruitment uh, during a 30 days to 180 day period prior to the filing of the firm application. Basically, what that means is uh, the recruitment, the active recruitment steps, uh, will take at least 30 days. And then, after these 30 days, the employer has to wait for another 30 days, which is known as the quiet period. This is when the employer must continue accept and review application. So the firm labor certification can be filed only 30 days after the last recruitment step was conducted, but no later than 180 days from the day the first recruitment step was conducted. So it's very important that uh, you keep track of each recruitment effort and make sure that the firm labor certification is uh, filed on time. The firm recruitment press, uh, process must be undertaken by one of the employer's authorized and designated staff member. Uh, the employee, the beneficiary of the firm labor certification, should not be involved in the recruitment efforts in any way. This is a very strict requirement set by the Department of Labor, and any involvement of um, the beneficiary can. Um, just a second. I'm sorry, we, we're having a little bit of. Of difficulties. Okay, so uh, let me go back. Uh, just to make sure, one important thing is uh, make sure that the employee, the beneficiary, is not involved in the recruitment because any involvement may jeopardize the firm labor certification and may lead to a denial of um, the case. And another important uh, point is the recruitment must be conducted in good faith. It has uh, the employer should follow the requirements set by the Department of Labor. They should demonstrate and made a good faith effort to um, find a qualified U.S. workers. Um, moving to the next slide. Um, okay. So, as I mentioned, uh, calculating the recruitment uh, dates and when um, to file a firm labor certification is essential. Uh, because the recruitment must occur with at least 30 days, um, and then the recruitment has an expiration date, uh, meaning that you have a very specific time frame of when and how to file the firm um, uh, application. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, so um, there is a recent um, guideline that was uh, published by the Department of Labor, and I have attached this to our handout today, which you guys can use. Um, and this uh, is um, the leading uh, guidelines for how to calculate the timelines and time periods for um, the recruitment efforts. 
Um, there is one exception that I want to mention. Uh, generally, all the recruitment uh, methods must be active um, when uh, you uh, must um, when you file for a labor certification. Um, and once you have conducted uh, one uh, recruitment effort, there has to be uh, a period of 30 days before um, before um, you can file um, the firm labor certification. The only exception is you can file a firm labor certification with uh, one um, recruitment effort, even though it hasn't been 30 days since the last um, date the recruitment was conducted. This um, exception uh, applies uh, to one of the three additional recruitment steps that must be taken for um, the professional position recruitment that you conduct. Uh, when calculating the time frame uh, for the recruitment efforts, uh, you want to distinguish uh, between um, calculating the time period and calculating the timeline. Calculating a time period means calculating the exact time of each recruitment step. Let's say you have a job order. You, the job order, uh, generally, you have to uh, have active for at least 30 days. So the calculation for the time period for the job order will be based on the rule that you need to count the, the start date and the, a date and the end date. Unlike the timeline, the timeline refers to the period um, when you can, um, when the recruitment is active and when you can file the recruitment. So by uh, discussing a timeline, um, usually we um, you, uh, we are referring to is the recruitment active and can you file a firm labor certification. Um, so the calculation rule for this uh, type of timeline is slightly different. Um, you don't have to count the date of the event. However, the last date is not included. I find very helpful to use um, this uh, time, uh, uh, this uh, website in calculating the dates. There are several websites that you can use, but um, it is important that you keep track of these dates because uh, any uh, minor miscalculation may lead to um, like missing a deadline for filing uh, the firm labor certification. Moving to the next slide uh, is. Um, how to recruit for non-professional and professional positions. So what type of recruitment and how many recruitment venues you need to use depends on whether or not the position is a professional or non-professional. Generally, no non-professional position requires only the mandatory step of recruitment, which are the 30-day job order the two newspaper ads that they have to be Sunday newspaper, two consecutive uh, ads, and also the internal posting. Unlike the non-professional positions, the professional position require, in addition to the three mandatory requirements, you also need to conduct three additional methods of recruitment. These methods um, are listed below and uh, the most common that um, uh, employers tend to use are usually the employer's internet websites, job search websites, um, advertisement with trade and professional organizations, employee referral program, um, as well as uh, local or ethnic newspaper. And in some instances, um, employers do tend to use radio or TV advertisement. What type of uh, additional recruitment method you will use depends um, also on the profession that you're recruiting for. So uh, you want to uh, look into something that um, uh, employees will be in, who are interested in this position will uh, most likely look for a position. So meaning if you have to use a trade or professional organization for um, let's say a software position, then the appropriate uh, trade uh, organization uh, or publication 
is uh, usually a um, 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 magazine that refer a professional magazine that refers to the software um, uh, community and is commonly used by a software engineers. Um, and for a software position, it doesn't make sense that you advertise in a professional organization that has nothing to do with software. Let's say um, you can advertise for a software position um, with a magazine that um, is, um, 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 let's say, uh, for a human resources development specialist. Um, so you want to make sure that the advertisement uh, tra is um, uh, targets the appropriate profession. Um, and um, if you uh, decide to use um, employee referring program, um, just be aware that um, you so the employer is required to conduct the recruitment in a group phase. So if uh, the, I would suggest use the employee referral program as long as uh, such program already exists. Um, it's not something that is made just for this uh, particular firm recruitment. Um, also, to be effective, the referral uh, program does have to um, suggest uh, incentives. Um, so the way to document uh, the uh, employee referral program is um, just make sure that uh, if most of the cases uh, nowadays uh, is uh, an email sent to employee or a brochure that is distributed to all employees. So you want to make sure that um, um, the employer documents that email was sent to all employees. If possible, if it's a small company, you do want to uh, include confirmation that all of these employees have received um, this information, as well as uh, you do want to mention, um, like provide a copy of the employee referral program and include this in your audit uh, file. Um, one caveat for advertising with professional organizations. There was a recent case law uh, from Balka regarding advertising in uh, LinkedIn. Um, the conclusion was that advertisement on LinkedIn uh, is not um, useful for a firm labor certification recruitment process. Um, the reason is uh, this is um, not considered uh, a trade organization, although it targets a large amount of professionals. The, the variety of type of professional is so high that you cannot consider this a trade organization. So I would stay away from uh, using LinkedIn uh, in lieu of uh, advertisement in trade and professional organizations. Um, another um, caveat that I want to point out is when you advertise on job search websites. Um, most of the newspapers uh, have um, an additional advertisement option through their online um, page, which usually is um, 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 which usually is um, uh, connected to a job search website, and usually the, the most common are Career Builder or Monster.com. So if you uh, advertise through a newspaper advertisement, gen generally uh, you can also use their uh, online server to uh, conduct the recruitment through their website. And uh, also this way you can uh, accommodate and meet this requirement for recruitment. Recently, some of these websites, uh, I believe it's the Career Builder and Monster.com, what they did is uh, they actually show on their website how many people have viewed um, the advertisement and how many people have applied for the position. Um, so um, be aware if uh, your employer is using this type of um, website uh, for advertisement because if uh, the printout indicates that, let's say, 10 people have applied for the position, then you want to make sure that um, your employer actually can um, document that uh, they, they have received at least 10 um, applications for the position. 
So to avoid this, because sometimes um, these websites do, do have, do record people who have viewed the advertisement and maybe have shown interest but not apply for the position. So to avoid any discrepancies of how many resumes actually were received and how many resumes this website shows that people have applied for the position, um, just make sure that you contact um, uh, the website administrator and uh, obtain like a information or just simply focus uh, on using a website a job search engine that does not uh, have uh, such uh, information um, um, online that uh, will uh, confuse and will uh, may bring some questions regarding of how many applications uh, have been uh, submitted. Moving to the next slide. Um, Speaking of professional and non-professional positions, generally the professional position is defined as a position that requires a college or higher degree. The Department of Labor has provided with uh, a list of positions that are considered professional and this is usually what you use in order to um, decide or just uh, get an idea whether to um, um, conduct uh, recruitment for professional or non-professional position. Uh, as one of our handouts, you can see uh, the attachment is appendix E, A, and you can definitely look through this uh, and make this a part of your uh, practice, just to make sure whether the, the position is professional or not. One caveat uh, which has um, like um, been questioned uh, recently is, um, it, there are some cases where the employer does not require, uh, let's say, a college degree for the position. Um, for example, the position, the employer requires an associate degree and, let's say, three years of experience. Generally speaking, this position uh, is uh, non-professional. Uh, however, when the employer submits a prevailing wage determination request, as you know, uh, the Department of Labor will review all of this uh, information and they will assign not only a wage, but they will assign an appropriate uh, all net code. Some of these codes will uh, follow in a professional position, so uh, the question arises whether you should advertise as a professional position or non-professional. Um, and the advice here is to conduct the three additional um, recruitment steps for a professional position, even though the employer does not consider this professional position. This is the safest approach and um, has worked for uh, my practice and uh, um, I want to get your attention um, in case uh, you run into uh, questions like uh, this. Uh, moving to the next step, so um, as I mentioned, the three main uh, mandatory recruitment steps that apply to all positions, being professional or non-professional, are the job order, the newspaper advertisement uh, on Sunday newspapers, and finally the notice of filing. Uh, we're going to discuss these uh, three uh, steps uh, of recruitment in a little bit of more detail. And we will start with the job order. The job order must be placed uh, with um, the state workforce agency that serves the uh, area of intended employment. Um, there are several different works, uh, state workforce agency that um, may uh, be used in a particular uh, area. Um, I'm giving you a link to um, the uh, most uh, recent and most up-to-date uh, uh, list of uh, worksite agency. So just make sure that, um, let's see, if you have a position in California, you do want to work with uh, the state work for agency in California. For California, uh, this is uh, currently at www.socal.gov.com. Um, in Texas, the, uh, the recent one is uh, workintexas.com uh, and just be very careful because sometimes there are um, um, like um, advertisement agency uh, 
that may mimic the name of the job order uh, website. So always check um, with uh, uh, the website or with the Department of Labor website just to make sure that you are placing your job order at the appropriate venue. The job order must run for 30 days um, and uh, the job order generally is um, a pre-advertisement that is done uh, at the uh, workforce agency. Um, as a practice rule, as a tip, I would suggest um, make, uh, you can, uh, if the time frames allow you, you can um, place the job order for like um, more than 30 days, I would say 35. Um, this is just in case, uh, because as I mentioned in the very beginning, um, the recruitment does have expiration date, and let's say the employer uh, hasn't placed all of the recruitment steps at the same time. So this can lead to um, one of the recruitment steps expiring sooner than others. And uh, if you uh, have the job order running for a little bit over than 30 days, this will give you uh, some flexibility um, and um, will provide you with the possibility of avoiding uh, such uh, uh, expiration of uh, the recruitment. So it's just a, a good uh, general rule of uh, practice. Another thing to consider is um, each state workforce agency has their own rules uh, of uh, how to place job orders. Uh, most of them require that you sign up uh, for on a website uh, and create an account for each employer. Uh, and in order to do this, most of these sites require not only a federal employer identification number, but uh, they will also require a state tax ID number. This tax ID number usually is associated uh, with uh, the unemployment insurance paid uh, uh, for the particular uh, state. So um, you want to make sure when you start uh, the firm um, process, uh, when you discuss uh, with the employer, sometimes uh, employers, especially if it's a small company, um, they may allow uh, that the employee works from uh, out of state or um, maybe they have um, planned to open a new office. So when you discuss uh, the case and you strategize the case with your uh, clients, just make sure that they are aware that at some point you need to register with the state where the job uh, potential job is located, and they will need to provide uh, a tax state tax ID number in order to create a job order. This will save you a lot of time um, in advance and also will uh, uh, help your client uh, prepare for this uh, state. Um, another caveat with the job order is um, some states um, do have uh, very specific um, uh, requirements of how to describe the position, and some of them may ask you to uh, provide uh, with uh, information regarding uh, the uh, wage offers. Generally speaking, the rule is the job order um, employer is not required to uh, provide information about the, uh, pre uh, the offered wage. However, when you go through placing the job order, uh, the website may warn you that if you don't um, inform, if you don't provide with uh, the job, uh, the wage, then uh, the job order will uh, not uh, go through. So just be aware of uh, what um, uh, job order you work in, what kind of state, and what their requirements are. And most of them, let's say, um, um, because we are in South California, most of our uh, clients, actually, the job orders that we do are in um, with uh, California. So for this, we usually get, uh, if you don't answer a wage, you will get a warning single, single, uh, signal saying, that the job order will not be uh, posted. Even though, uh, even if you leave it as, um, let's say, zero or blank, then the job order still will be posted um, with, um, um, oh, and this will not jeopardize your case. So most of the employers are not comfortable of uh, informing, um, like providing the job or information about the wage on the job order. So um, you want to like consider this and advise the clients. And uh, I, I generally try to not include the wage um, on the job order. 
Another thing to consider is most of uh, the job order accounts do have uh, a pull down menu where the, you have to select a question, uh, like uh, you have to select an option for uh, a question related to the wage. And usually um, some of these questions are related to the compensation. And uh, they, um, one of the, the, the pull down menu will give you different options, and some of them um, are very confusing and they don't really apply with the firm labor certification process. So, um, um, let's say uh, one in California, one of the most common is uh, there is a pull down menu for the compensation, and the options are depends on the experience, uh, we'll discuss with the applicant and there are a few more other options. So if you choose the pens of the experience, then in a way this will jeopardize the firm level certification process because in the job order and the idea behind the firm is that um, we will, uh, you have a very specific uh, experience requirement. So depending on the experience will uh, conflict with this uh, experience requirement. So uh, the best option to use is we'll discuss with the applicant. Um, and there was a recent Balta decision on that um, that specifically refers to uh, the pull down menu. So just be aware when you uh, place a job order or when you advise um, your client on placing the job order how to uh, complete um, this uh, uh, information. And always, always uh, I, I like to print out everything, review it again and again just to make sure because even one little uh, mistake as we all know uh, may jeopardize the case. Um, how to document the job order? Uh, the general rule is uh, that uh, the documentation of the job order, um, uh, like uh, of placement of the job order is not required because the idea is that, well, if it is um, uh, posted with the Department of Labor, then the Department of Labor should have record of it. Uh, although this is the general rule, I would uh, be careful about it. Um, and the reason is uh, uh, you always want to print out and document uh, and have um, an evidence of um, the job order being active. And I usually print um, a screen from the first day and uh, the last day of the posting. Um, and I usually also print a few extra days uh, just to make sure that we have uh, flexibility of the date. Make sure that um, the date of the posting appears on the printout and they are not cut off of um, the um, uh, document when it's printed. Um, another thing, um, so uh, this general rule that I mentioned, uh, you can uh, see um, um, the, the information about it in the matter of a cut above ceramic tile, uh, which was a bulk of decision. Uh, although this is gener the general rule, um, I would say um, just it's the safest uh, approach to still record this and uh, print uh, and save copies for your files. Moving to the next slide um, is um, we're going to discuss the um, next uh, type of mandatory um, advert uh, mandatory recruitment method, which is the newspaper advertisement. So the newspaper advertisement must be published in a newspaper of a general circulation that serves the area of intended of intended employment. This can brought a lot of questions because, okay, so which newspaper should we use? Could we use a local newspaper? Generally, you want to target a newspaper with a large circulation, uh, but you also want to make sure that this newspaper is distributed and read and well known in the area where the employment will take place. So. Uh, <coughs> You want to make sure that you choose the uh, most appropriate to the occupation and the workers uh, that are likely to read the, uh, this newspaper and they are also likely to be the people who will actually apply for this position. So um, because we most of my practice is um, in uh, Southern California, um, this actually has come up uh, in uh, my um, one of the recruitments that uh, we have conducted here. So how it works is LA Times is uh, considered uh, 
um, a newspaper with uh, a very high, um, major newspaper with a high circulation in Southern California. However, uh, uh, LA Times has a different um, uh, circulation and they have like different uh, issues uh, based on different counties. So we had to recruit uh, in Orange County and uh, you for, I, I found out that an advertisement in LA Times um, maybe it's not the best uh, advertisement venue to uh, meet the requirements for the newspaper advertisement. Uh, apparently, LA Times has uh, uh, Orange County uh, edition, so the newspaper advertisement has to be placed in the Orange County edition because this is uh, what um, like workers in this area will read. They will not uh, like uh, read the ma major LA Times that is read here in LA. So just be very cautious when uh, you advise clients of uh, what uh, Sunday newspaper advertisement will be appropriate. Um, generally, there are a lot of uh, um, advertising agency that specialize uh, in um, uh, firm labor certification advertisement. So um, I would uh, suggest um, you might want to advise your clients to uh, um, uh, get services from them or if um, they uh, want to rely, uh, they want to place the advertisement themselves, then you want to make sure that uh, the newspaper has a high circulation, um, but also you want to make sure where this newspaper is uh, distributed. Um, the Sunday, the newspaper advertisement must be uh, play, uh, published on two consecutive Sundays. Uh, make sure that you avoid major holidays uh, such as Thanksgiving, Christmas, or any other um, major religious uh, holiday. Uh, generally speaking, uh, this um, uh, could uh, lead to um, like a negative result if uh, the case is audited because um, it has been questioned in the past uh, how many people actually uh, may um, uh, read and look for jobs during such a major holiday. So to avoid any um, issues like this, uh, be cautious of uh, when you do the advertisement and uh, stay away of uh, the major holidays. Um, it, this is what I, I usually do for my uh, own practice. Uh, the newspaper advertisement can be documented uh, by either obtaining the original uh, tear sheet or by the electronic tear sheet. Uh, and this is a very straightforward uh, requirement that has been accepted throughout the years by the Department of Labor. Um, unlike that, uh, what the text of the newspaper advertisement has brought a lot of questions and generally the text of the newspaper advertisement must include the following. You want to have the name of the employer. You want to have directions to the applicant of how to apply for the position. And you want to uh, provide with a job description that is specific enough to get the attention to the US workers who um, might uh, qualify for the job opportunity. And you also want to include the geographic location of the job opportunity. So generally speaking, I would say uh, make sure that uh, you have uh, the job title, uh, the name of the employer who is looking for, uh, who is hiring, the location. Usually uh, you can just say uh, the city and state. Uh, and ideally, we want to include all of the requirements for the position. And if this is not possible, um, then um, you can try just uh, guiding the, uh, you can try uh, using a text where you are uh, advising um, the um, applicants where to go and uh, see the job advertisement and all of the requirements. And most importantly, you want to make sure that you have a very clear um, instructions of how to apply for this position. And let's say you have an employer who has um, a, like a lot of openings, position openings, and they may be with the same job title. So to avoid any uh, 
of confusion, you might want to include a job code or job number or any right position number to identify that this is the position that they are flying for. So you want to make sure also um, when you um, provide information about where to apply and how to apply, you want this information to be consistent on all advertising and um, venues. So the instructions that you give on how to apply on the job folder um, should be consistent with the instructions that uh, the employer gives on how to apply on the newspaper advertisement, on the notice of filing, or any additional um, venues of um, advertisement that you are using. So you can just uh, switch and change, like let's say on the job order, you can ask them um, to mail the application. Then you have to follow the same um, advice uh, um, on how to apply on the newspaper advertisement. So. Um, because the newspaper advertisement is one of the most uh, expensive um, uh, portion of the recruitment, a lot of employees uh, uh, will try uh, to save money and they may skip um, some of the information. Uh, make sure that you always, always have the name of the employer, um, directions how to apply for the position, include the geographic uh, area, include the job title, and also include a way to identify um, the position. Um, usually, if the employer um, advertised through their website, you can, instead of like including um, the complete job description and requirements in the newspaper advertisement, you can just um, uh, include information of uh, complete that the job description and requirements for the position are available on this website at this address. So this way you can save uh, some money as well as make sure that all of the requirements for the newspaper advertisement are met. Moving to the next slide, which is um, the last um, uh, mandatory requirement uh, for uh, recruitment is the notice of filing. So generally, uh, when um, uh, when applying for a firm labor certification, one of the requirements is that the employers must give notice of the filing, uh, and they have to. How to give this notice depends on whether or not there is a bargaining agreement. So bargaining agreement usually is associated with uh, a, a union uh, position. So if you have a union position, then you have to notify uh, the uh, appropriate uh, bargaining representative. So make sure that um, you provide the uh, representative with the notice of filing. Uh, and also make sure that you send this to the appropriate representative as well as uh, you document that the employer has uh, done, um, has sent uh, these documents. So ideally, uh, you want to make sure that it's sent by mail and um, also if you have a copy of everything that was sent. And if it's sent by mail, you want to have a confirmation that um, this uh, um, notification uh, was uh, de delivered to the appropriate uh, representative. Most of the cases um, where you uh, work on a firm labor certification uh, are not for union position. So in this case, um, the notice of filing, uh, the notification is done by uh, posting a notice of filing at the actual office location. So you want to make sure that uh, when you instruct uh, um, the employee of how to uh, provide this notice of filing, you want to make sure that they post it at the office location where the position will be. Um, and just make sure that they don't confuse, they don't post it, let's say, on the, com the company headquarters. It has to be posted at the location of the position. Also, it has to be posted for at least 10 consecutive days. Uh, it has to be 10 consecutive business days. So we want to make sure that if the posting is done during a holiday or during a time when the office um, will be closed, you want to make sure that uh, um, the posting is um, uh, posted uh, beyond uh, this date. So you want to make sure that 10 consecutive business days uh, the posting was placed. And how to document the posting? Usually, uh, once the posting is removed, 
um, um, you may want to have the um, HR specialist or employee representative, employ your representative, um, write a, a short statement that uh, they posted this at this location from this day to this day, and also uh, have them sign, provide their name and uh, job title. Um, um, the notice of filing is uh, essential of what you must include uh, on the notice of filing. And as you see on the slides, uh, you have to state that uh, this notice is uh, being provided as a result of the filing of the firm labor certification. You want to provide information about the position, and most importantly, you want to say the job title, the employer, the location. Uh, generally, I will include all of the job duties, all of the requirements, and um, I will also include um, information of how you can apply for the position. Um, one very important thing is that the notice of filing must include the um, wage offer for the position. This is a mandatory requirement. If this um, uh, information is not included on the notice of filing, the firm labor certification may be uh, denied. So make sure that uh, the um, wage is listed. And another very important thing is uh, you want to state on the notice of filing that any person may provide documentary evidence bearing on the application to the Department of Labor. And you want to make sure that uh, you provide uh, the address and way of um, contacting the Department of Labor as well as uh, you provide the accurate address. Uh, believe it or not, um, I uh, have a case where the firm labor certification uh, was audited and the uh, certifying officer uh, questioned the uh, validity of the Department of Labor address, where this was the actual uh, address or was this uh, the correct address. So just be aware and make sure that you include all of these um, uh, mandatory requirements in the notice of filing because, uh, as we all know, uh, one legal um, mistake may uh, jeopardize the entire firm uh, application. Um, with the notice of filing brings us to the question about the in-house media. So many uh, employers now they uh, do utilize in-house media where they uh, have an in-house um, uh, web server for communication among employees internally. Um, and generally, if uh, the in-house media is also used uh, by the employer to recruit for the position among the employees, then in this case, you also want to uh, post a notice of filing through the in-house media. And uh, you want to make sure that the employer uh, posts this uh, for at least 10 consecutive business days or uh, for a period uh, that uh, is uh, usually associated with uh, the employer's standard recruitment practice. Uh, in the in-house media notice, you do need to provide information about um, the wage. Uh, and uh, just um, discuss this with uh, the employer before the recruitment uh, because some uh, some of um, the companies that I, I work with, uh, although they do have uh, in-house media, they don't utilize this as a recruitment uh, venue. So if, if this is the case, then um, you or this employer will not be required uh, to uh, post uh, in-house media. So with that, um, we are at um, the end of our presentation today. Um, basically, uh, the information that we discussed today is just a general overview of the recruitment efforts and how to document them. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please just feel free to email them to me, and I will make sure um, that um, we post the answers on our website. Thank you for your attention today, and um, uh, thank you for your participation.